Hello Hopkins and welcome to the Monday, May 11th edition of Hopkins Today. I'm Paul Gressel, filling in for Mark Ingber. With summer ahead and budgets tight, folks may be looking for recreational activities closer to home. That means busy times for the parks and nature centers operated by Three Rivers Park District. Today we kick off a five-part series of interviews with Thomas McDowell, an associate superintendent with the district, who will tell us what's on tap for Three Rivers. Well, first and foremost, we're expecting a busy summer. We uh, are anticipating uh, increased attendance at our facilities and our programs, partly because more and more people are finding out about the Park District and what we have to offer, and partly uh, we're anticipating that there may be a, a surge in park attendance uh, due to the economic uh, conditions that people are making the decisions to take uh, more modest vacations closer to home, uh, to uh, spend uh, their weekends uh, in, the, in their local parks or attending park programs or, or campgrounds and so forth. Uh, and early indicators are that that's uh, going to be the case. Uh, our, our public campgrounds uh, at Baker Park Reserve and at Carver Park Reserve uh, are, um, the, the reservations for the campgrounds, campsites, are 50% uh, ahead of where we were last year at this time. So we're anticipating a very uh, brisk season there. Um, our public programs, it's, uh, particularly our summer camps, are well ahead of uh, registration in, in past years as well, which is again another decision that uh, parents make in terms of how kids are going to spend their summers. Uh, our summer camps have continued to grow in popularity over the last few years. This year, uh, that trend has continued. Tomorrow, Tom will tell us about some exciting new facilities that are being built in parks operated by the Three Rivers Park District. Two students from Hopkins High School, Ananias Brown and Blake Smedstad, currently have their artwork on display at the Perpich Center for the Arts in Golden Valley as part of the 5th Congressional District Art Show. A reception and the announcement of award honorees is scheduled for 6 p.m. tonight at the Perpich Center. The first place selection will be on display for the year in the corridors of the U.S. Capitol, along with artwork from other congressional districts throughout the United States. The Mall of America in Bloomington was the site of the 17th annual Susan G. Komen Twin Cities Race for the Cure Sunday, May 10th. Nearly 50,000 runners, including a number from Hopkins, took part in an effort to raise funds to aid breast cancer survivors. More than a million dollars was raised during the event. Here's a look at the festivities. treatments on February 16th. The high, the high energy radiation on the breast area is intended to kill any cancer cells that could be remaining in the breast. Grandma's radiation oncologist told my grandma that that with the radiation treatment, she has a 98% chance of being cancer free for the next five years. Grandma's fourth pitch was a fastball right down the center of the plate. Strike two. Grandma began to suffer from fatigue and skin irritation, the two most common side effects of radiation therapy. I was worried that Grandma would never be able to play with me again because she had a lack of energy to move around. Mom told me that these side effects would pass and Grandma would feel like herself again in time. Grandma's fifth pitch was low and inside, ball three. She began to anti-hormone therapy following the end of radiation. I asked my mom what this meant. Mom said the proposal of therapy is to stop her body from producing estrogen, which can cause breast cancer to go back again. Grandma has three balls and two strikes. A low count. We are still waiting for Grandma's next pitch. Time will, will determine when the pitch is going to be thrown. We are optimistic that radiation treatments and an anti-hormone treatment plan will be successful and she will be a survivor. For a young boy, this meant understanding. That being diagnosed with breast cancer doesn't always mean your Grandma's going to die. There's always a glimmer of hope in bottom ninth inning. Today's weatherunderground.com forecast calls for partly cloudy skies on Tuesday with a lingering chance of thunder showers. That's it for today. Mark Engber will return to the desk tomorrow.